What is up everyone, welcome back to the part 3 of this tutorial series on how to make a VR body. In the two previous episodes we learned how to use inverse kinematic to move the arms of the player and change procedurally the feet position to match the ground. And in today's video we will learn how to use this to animate the legs according to the movement of the headset. I'm Valem and this channel is all about VR development. So if you want to learn more about VR, go on and subscribe to this channel. Also I will put an extra episode on my Patreon where we will learn how to use custom hands that work with this VR body. So without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so we are back where we were at the end of last episode. So I've imported in my project these four animations, an idle animation, a walk backwards animation and two other for walking left and right. As you can see, I've already made an avatar for each one of them and set the loop time to true like we did earlier for the walking animation in part 2. Now let's create an animator based on this. First, I will select our robot Kyle and go in the animator tab. Now instead of the walking animation, I will use by default our idle animation which I will drag in the animator and set to default layer state. So this will be for the state where we don't move. And when we move, we will go in a blend tree which I can create by right clicking and select blend tree. I can make two transitions, one to go from the idle state to the moving state and one that goes the other way around. To trigger this transition, I will create a new bool parameter called isMoving initially set to false and now I can trigger the idle to moving state when isMoving is true and go from moving to idle when is moving is false. Also to make the animation a bit smooth, I will uncheck both as exit time in the transition. Perfect. Ok, now let's focus on the moving animation state. So let's double click on the blend tree. In my case, I want to trigger a particular animation based on the direction we are moving. So to do this, I will set the blend type to 2D simple directional and now I can drag all the animations in here. So the walking animation which I can set to 0, 1, the walking backward animation which I can set at 0, minus 1 and finally the walk left animation at minus 0 and the walk right animation at 1, Zero. Here you go, now as you can see we now have 4 animations that can be triggered and blend by the position of the red dot here. Perfect! Now to control the red dot we need two more float variables in our animator. So first I will delete the blend variable which is created automatically when we create a blend tree and we will create instead a new float variable called direction x and do the same for direction y. Now in the blend tree I can use as the parameter on the x axis the direction x variable and on the y axis the direction y variable that we just created. And there you go, now everything is ready. As you can see we can now control all of our legs animation using three variables is walking, direction x and direction y. Now let's create a script that will control this parameter and we will name this script VR animator controller. Perfect, so in this script I will try to use the headset movement to change the parameter so I will need three variables, a private animator variable called animator, a private vector3 variable called previous pose and a reference to the VR rig we made in the first part of this tutorial series which will give me the VR headset reference. So at the start of the game I can initialize all of these variables, so the animator will uh, get component of type animator, the VR rig with get component of type VR rig, and set the previous position to be the initial position of the head, so VR rig dot head dot VR target dot position. Now in the update function I will start by computing the speed of the head with vector3 headset speed equals vrrig.head.vrtarget.position minus previous position and everything divided by time.delta time. 
As we only care about the horizontal speed, I will set the vertical speed to 0 with headset speed dot y equals 0. Finally, this was for the global speed, but we want the speed according to the direction of the player. So to get this, I will do vector3 headset local speed equals transform dot inverse transform direction headset speed. And here the inverse transform direction give the speed according to the direction of the player. So exactly what we want. And now we can finally set the previous position to be the actual position we have. Now that we have computed our local speed, it is time to set the value of the animator parameter we used earlier. So to check if we are working, I will check if the magnitude of the headset speed is greater than a certain threshold value that we can call speed threshold and that I will initially set as 0.1 and make it public so it will show in the inspector. So if the speed exceeds this value, it will make us walk. Now for the direction of the walking, I will set the direction x value to be the forward speed, so let's set local speed dot x, but as I need this value to not go above 1 or below minus 1, I will clamp it with clamp. Next, I will do the same for direction y, but this time with let's set local speed dot z. Here, be careful to use the z value and not the y value, which is always zero in our case as we have no vertical speed. And there you have it. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity to test what we've done. Now if I press play, you can see how beautiful this is. We can now move the head target and the walking animation will be triggered correctly and the feet will place correctly on the ground. However, if we look closely, you can see that we have a bit of a jitter going on in the animation when we move slow. And I found out that an easy way to fix this is to smooth the value in our direction. So let me show you how we can quickly fix this. So let's go back to our script. First, I will need to get the previous direction value by calling float previous direction x equals animator dot get float direction x and do the same for the direction y. And now we can smooth the value we give in our direction with matf.lerp previous direction then the target direction we need and use a smoothing parameter that I will name smoothing and that range from 0 to 1. Now we can as always do the same for the direction y and go back to the unity editor to see the result. And here you go, now if I set the smoothing value to 1, we obtain what we had before, but once I decrease this value to 0.3 and below, you can see that everything seems to be working well. Finally, I found out that the animation look better if we increase the influence of the walking animation over the turn walk animation. And for this, I can go in the blend tree we made earlier. Now, instead of a y value of 1 and minus 1, I will put it closer to the center, so maybe at 0 0.25. And there we go. Now, let's click on play to see what we've done. And there we have it, our full body IK system is now over. We can now control a full body with three points. Now you can simply use this with every VR headset and every VR SDK by simply dragging the point under the ensure position. So for example, in my case, I have the OVR camera rig here from the Oculus integration and I will drag the head point under the center eye ensure, which is the position of the camera and the end point under the left end and the right end intro. Don't forget to reset the point transform after and here you go, we can now control in VR this body. How awesome is that? Obviously there is still room for improvement. For example, we did not use turn animation when not walking and that's something that you can easily add to this system as I shown with the walking animation. But that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, you can help promote this tutorial by sharing and liking this video so that other VR dev will see it. As I said in the intro, I will post an extra episode on my Patreon where I will show you how to use custom end with this VR body. And on this subject, a big shout out to last week Patreon, their name will appear on the screen. 
you guys are awesome anyway thank you for watching and see you in the next one